All praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Kakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Now we're going to get into this fourth kingdom because it brings out a point um, about the law and what this fourth kingdom would do. Um, and why the Lord would be angry with this fourth kingdom because they was doing some major offenses and uh, blasphemy against the Lord and this uh, scarlet colored beast red dragon the whore of Babylon all of these things represent that fourth kingdom that was in the book of Daniel or that the prophet Daniel prophesied about because the angel showed and the Lord showed him all the kingdoms that was going to come up to Yahweh's kingdom and try to battle with Yahweh and he would, and Yahweh was going to destroy these kingdoms. That's Daniel 2.44. So real quick, let's get into it. Uh, let's see. Daniel chapter 7. Now, Daniel chapter 7, it go, goes hand in hand with Daniel chapter 2. But starting in uh, 7 and 3, it says, And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So these four beasts was different from one another. Okay. And when you go into, um, let's go to Daniel 2, because I want to show this. Daniel 2 and 38, I think. 39, it says, After these shall arise another kingdom inferior to you. So, uh, the first one was the head of gold, Nebuchadnezzar. Then the second one was the Medes um, and the Persians. Okay. Um, so, so that head of gold, and then the um, second one was going to be... Um, inferior to the one of gold say after the third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron so we talking about that fourth kingdom this is uh who Yahweh Shah is coming to destroy okay now we jump over to seven and three talked about the four beasts Let's get to the fourth beast. Uh, let's see here. The fourth beast. Let's see, verse 17, it says, And these great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. So this is a kingdom. This fourth, fourth beast is a kingdom. Verse 19, it says, Then I then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoureth, break in pieces, and stamp the residue of his feet. Uh, let's see. So this, uh, talking about the fourth beast, verse 20 says, And of the ten horns that were in his head. So this fourth beast had ten horns. Okay, when you go to Revelation uh, 12, it tells you who the fourth beast was. Verse 3, it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great, red dragon having seven heads 
heads and ten horns. So the great dragon was this fourth beast, this fourth fourth kingdom. Okay, verse nine it says, and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called Satan and called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Which deceived the whole world. Okay, so this fourth kingdom was the great dragon. Then you jump over to verse 13 and say, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. So the, the great red dragon and the beast is that fourth beast of Daniel, that fourth kingdom. Okay, when you go to Second Ezra, <clears throat> Six start start at twelve. Okay, so lock it. Twelve second edges twelve. Oh, let's see. Second edges twelve and eleven. It say the eagle whom thou saw came up out of the sea is the king of which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. So Ezra's wrote about this fourth kingdom. Let's get that in 30, uh, what, 40, 40 to get right to the point. It says, and the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed. That's what Daniel said. And had power over the, whole, over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. So as and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with the sea. For, for the earth has thou not judged with truth. For you have afflicted the meat and have hurt the peaceable and have loved liars. Okay, so let's go back to Daniel. Because this is describing the same uh, entity. Daniel. Seven. Okay, so them them ten horns talking about the ten kings. Verse twenty four is saying the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. So them this, 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 the ten horns uh, are ten kings, and the fourth kingdom represent the tenth king the ten kings see and these ten kings are is talking about right before Yahweh shall crack the sky and take over and and put his kingdom um over all kingdoms on the earth well let's get that real quick um verse 13 and say i saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man come with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days they brought him near before him. That kills the Trinity. And there was given him dominion, glory, and the, a kingdom that all people, nation, tongue, should serve him. His dominion is the everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So this is the kingdom Yahweh shall going to uh, come and put place on earth and rule over it. But let's get 25. What is this fourth kingdom doing? It say, and he, talking about the fourth kingdom, these ten kings, he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. See, this fourth kingdom will reject the laws they would have to be ruling with wicked oppression, you see, and they would wear out the saints. So this we can see clearly who is doing what. How how is the fourth kingdom speaking great words against the most high? Now look at how Revelation describes it. What is it, thirteen and one? What? 
What in the heck is happening? Salakia. 13. Here we go. And I stood upon the sea. Um... And I stood up, stood upon the sand of the sea and saw the beast rise up rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his head ten crowns, and his head the name of blasphemy. See, that fourth kingdom was um telling lies, man, and talking against speaking great words against the most high blasphemy. Now when they changed the law, that's the big thing that they did. And you can tell that this fourth kingdom is not talking about some Christian church or Muslim mosque or Buddhist, Hinduist, Egyptologist group of people. See, these laws is going to be kept by the Israelites, the children of Israel, because they rejected the laws and because the laws was only given to them. But these heathen, they not gonna be able to keep the law. And so this is not talking about some Christian church. See the saints of the most high is talking about the Israelites. Let's get that real quick. Some 147 and 19. So lucky, I meant 148. It says, he, he also exhorted the horn of his people. See, that horn stands for kingdom or kings. It says, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. So his saints are the children of Israel. Of people near unto him. Not talking about some Christian church. And so when you go um, back to Daniel, it says um, they was going to change the times and the laws. And so, this is what's why they rule them with much wicked oppression. Let me get Proverbs 29.2. They say, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear the rule, the people mourn. Okay. So the last rulership was given to the um, fourth kingdom, and that fourth kingdom ruled with wickedness and lies. So when you're going, <clears throat> you're going to Job nine twenty four. It say the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? See, he came out speaking lies about the Israelites. And uh, demonizing uh, the um, Israelites, Salakia. It says he um, covered the faces of the judges. So he set up, set up white Jesus. White Jesus is a, a, a major mark on how they uh, whitewashed everything and covered over the true identity of the Israelites. Now, um, it talks about the wicked. Now, we, where was Job living, first of all? Job was living in um, Edom. Look at verse 21. It says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom that dwell in the land of Uz. So you get Job 1 and 1. It says, there was a man named Job in the land. I mean, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. 
So Uz is the son of Esau, grandson of Esau, or a blood. He from the bloodline in the house of Esau. And this is where Job was saying, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. See, and then you go to um, what is it? Um, Job. Oh, you go to Malachi, cause that link up with Edom and Job, but then Malachi one and four links up with the same people. It says, whereas Edom said. We are impoverished, but we will return and build the dust of the places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them, the whole house of Esau, they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So these Edomites is changing the laws of the Most High, saying you ain't got to keep those laws. See, them laws is over with, and you ain't got to keep those laws. And we know that's a bold faced lie. Let's get this. Um, Psalm 119. Was it 142? It says. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. See, it's an everlasting law. The, the law, the, the, um, the law is righteousness. That's how you know what righteousness is. Is it Deuteronomy 6, 25? It says, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he have commanded us. Okay. What is it? Uh, 39 and 1. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, 39 and 1. Oh, it's a verse. Uh, is it a root or 40? Let me try. Try Baruch real quick. What is it? Chapter 4. Bingo. It says, Salaki. <clears throat> it says, um, This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endured forever. All that keep it shall come to life, but all such, but such as leave it shall die. So if you leave that law, you're going to die. And the problem is these um, Edomites done convinced the world and deceived the world, because it said deceive the whole world, these ten kings, that you ain't got to keep no laws and that the law that he changed uh, is correct. He was correct in, in changing these laws, them as a nation. But that's a bold-faced lie. But this is what they was going to try to do. That's why Matt, uh, Yahweh Shah said this. He said, not everyone, verse 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. It says, um, verse, let me jump down to verse 23, and then will I profess unto him, I never knew you, depart from me, you work, you that work iniquity. Oh, he's saying these people working iniquity thinking they're going to call on the name of the Lord, and he's going to help them. That's not going to happen. Um, let's see. You know, it was another one that I wanted, but that's mainly the gist of what I was bringing out. That this, this fourth kingdom was going to rule pretty much with a rod of iron, 
and Yahweh and the Israelites is going to take the kingdom from them. And that fourth kingdom would be the last one to rule. And pretty much Revelation 17, 16 tell you how the end of that fourth kingdom was going to happen. They say the ten horns which thou saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. So this uh, that woman, which is America, when she um, get begin to be hated, um, the, the rest of these uh, Edomites that's in the EU and the NATO, they gonna turn on America and hate her, and they gonna shoot nuclear missiles and blow her to smithereen. Let's get that Jeremiah fifty and nine. It says, For the low I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From hence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. <clears throat> so this is how that fourth kingdom is going to end. Assembly of great nations. Uh, the ten king that she was affiliated with, they going to blow her to smithereen. All the nations going to uh, attack Babylon. That's going to be the end of the fourth kingdom as a whole. And that fourth kingdom represents the Edomites. Let's get that in second Ezra. Six and nine. It say for Esau is the end of the world. Esau is that fourth kingdom. The nation of Edom is ruling the fourth and last kingdom. It says, and Jacob, which is Jehovah, who's gonna have the scepter, uh uh what it said he gonna have the scepter, he gonna have the rulership. It says and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. As when Yahweh shall come and present himself to the world, that's when his, he's going to begin his, the new heaven and the new earth, that blessing that was given from Abraham right along to uh, Isaac and then Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. And so that fourth kingdom is going to be destroyed. That's why you, you got Isaiah 63 say Yahweh shot coming to Edom. You got Isaiah 34 saying the same thing. That Idumia and Edom is going, it's going to be a great slaughter in these places. It's going to be all hell breaking loose. And it's all going to end in the great grand finale of the Israelites being delivered and these other nations that's in Babylon, the great America, they're going to get burnt up by nuclear fire that uh, these other nations is going to send over him. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rikakadash, double honors to the elders, pushing the truth, peace to these late worldwide. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.